through the Evan Giddings computer or metrics, is the dynasty over for the Warriors. They won in 22, followed that up, lost conference semis to the Lakers, six games, didn't get swept, I don't need to tell you, and then no playoffs. Are we done, or are, is there still next year we need to see for me to to give you a you know 100% full-fledged answer? I mean, winning a championship is the odds are stacked against you just in terms of father time fighting you, swinging from both sides. I hate father time. Bro. I mean, the lack, I think, right now of, of certainty from young players is also something you're pushing against. You got the rock in a hard place, which is are you too young and inexperienced or are you too old and over the <sighs> hill? And I think we've seen from around the league that the younger players, they're on the rise. And I think that creates more parity in the league than ever. And I just wonder for the Warriors, to me, that if you're going to look at the dynasty as being over, I think it's been over. I mean, it, it, it ended last season. When I, I just hear Austin from San Jose voice. Go, when you say that? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think when we look back in history, and the fact that it's been 10, 12 years of you know the buildup, the championships, and then the fall off towards the end, it's miraculous. And it's something that we'll probably never see again. But that doesn't mean, good that I don't feel optimistic about the Warriors' chance to compete. You got to some good news, back you said. Playoffs. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lay and I want to hear why people feel nervous or excited at 888-957-9570. Evan Infersteine with Guru. Here's the reason, Goo. I don't know if you, if you noticed the, the trends of the last, I don't know, let's say five years in the NBA. Trends. There's, there's been five different champs the last five seasons. Mm. From 2019, the Raptors, bubble championship with the Lakers, the Bucks in 2021, oh, man. the Nuggets, and, of course, uh, the Warriors. The Warriors, right. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, got you, got you. <laughs> That's, that hasn't happened since the 1970s. There have been no five-year period since 1979 or 75 to 79 in which there's been five separate individual champs. Wow. That says to me that the league, m more so than ever, is open for a team that can get hot. It's not a dynastic group right now. The lay of the land. And look, Minnesota could be coming. They might have something. They got the defending champs on the ropes right now. Who I said were a modern day dynasty thinking they were going to walk through this. And that's part of wh where we're at, I think, is we're always looking for the next dynasty, the next big thing. I think it's one of the reasons why, and we'll talk to Sam Amink about it at 12, people are putting Anthony Edwards already in the Michael Jordan category. How people in New York are talking about Brunson as their Jordan. Everyone's looking for the next big thing, the next thing that they can grasp onto and feel comfortable with, knowing that there's an extended run of success on the way. I don't think we can look at the Warriors like that anymore. And I think that's unhealthy to look at the Warriors like that. We need to take each individual season for what it is. Last year, they were better than they were the year before. This year, can they be a little bit better? Can they get to the postseason? Can they try and make some noise and figure out where to go from there? I don't want to look at this team, Goo, like an expectation of all of a sudden catapulting themselves from a non-playoff team back into a finals team. If that happens, that would be incredible. But to me, Goo, that's unrealistic. Wow, Evan, and you got so many emotions aroused in in my stomach and in my mind of well, if you're if you're talking to me like that and you make a lot of stellar points in 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 life and in sports, you have icons, Joe Montana, the Jerry Rices, guys and gals worthy of what do you want us to do for you? And Evan, I guess if you are correct, and signs are like seasons gone by, and this last season of the Warriors not making a, uh, the playoffs is a sign of things to come, then, Evan, I don't ever want to, you know, close my eyes or plug my ears of talk about, well, it sounds like the Warriors can't really start over until 30 is not here. And to me, 30 is still playing at a high level. He still wants to win. So I guess how do you accomplish everything you laid out yeah. and tell the fan base we're done winning chips? Not that it can't happen. We're done winning chips. But the one part of that equation to me that what I believe to my core is that forget the fans, that's not going to be good enough for Stephen Curry. So that's why I'm thinking they're going to go big game hunting 
and and try to speed expedite the the downtime or or the year or two like Steiny talks about and guys grow and go through their puberty. I'm thinking no, throw everything at NOW now and maybe you take another run at it. But the run to me is not going to be anywhere worth the hole that you potentially dig yourself. And actually, I, I do disagree a little bit from the 510 on the Xfinity Mobile text line. Steph is living in fantasy land. I don't think he is living in fantasy land. I think Steph Curry is as competitive as anyone we've ever seen. Believe it. I think he's a killer. But I also think he's watching the playoffs, and he'll be playing with a couple of these guys in Paris in a couple uh, months. I know you don't uh, like that. Uh, I love you, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> on, but I also think he's looking around and not saying, how do we get over on these teams, but how do we get in the mix? The, I, I think the days of the Warriors being the favorites are done. The, the days of them winning titles might not be over, and that might be foolish to think, but I, don't, I think you have to at least give them the benefit of the doubt from that standpoint that they might be able to conjure something. Is it likely? No. And might the title come after Steph Curry? Potentially. More likely than not. But, Goo, it's not to me, it's <sighs> not about getting to number one. It's about being one of the five, one of the six. We didn't think about the Dallas Mavericks as a contender right. until midway through this right. season. The Indiana Pacers are in the second round after making a big trade at the deadline acquiring Siakam. Are they going to beat the Knicks? Potentially not. But they're one of the final eight teams. That's, to me, how we have to look at the Warriors and why I think that the league, the way it's set up, with the amount of parity and equality that there is, I think the Warriors have reason to believe that they're not as far away from being in that mix. I'm not mad at all. And so, eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. I do want to bring in some callers. Here. Yeah, Big smooth going to hand back. out in yeah. Oakland. <laughs> Big smooth. What's Smoothie. going on? You're on with Evan and Goo on ninety five seven. The hey. game. How are you? Hey, peace and blessings, man. I got four quick points. that got to get out of me, man. Ooh. The world. No, I can't talk about this anywhere else. People look at me like I'm crazy. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> look, they got Ant Man. We got Wise Man, and it set us back. All right, <sighs> man. Look at. Oh. Looking at DiVincenzo, it makes me say, GP2, you got to give us more, baby. You got to give us more. Uh, you you got to give us more. We were expecting uh, 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 more. So let's just be honest about that. Draymond, you really messed us up, man, in terms of really not knowing what we have. You, 20 games, man. We, we could have evaluated better. Even if we would have made the playoffs, we could have made an early exit. We just didn't know because Draymond's knuckleheadedness robbed us of really evaluating this team. Because the second half, when Draymond came back, we were a different team. But how much better, I don't really know, because Draymond didn't give us the luxury of finding out. And then one, one more point is that looking at what's out there, you know, you got three bigs just, just stifling Denver. <sighs> we may have to adjust. Not may. We will have to adjust from a small ball to more of a medium ball because we're not the team that can shoot the lights out like we used to be. We used to hang our hats on. Yeah, we can shoot the lights out of any kind of game. We haven't really been doing that in a couple of years. Steph goes nuclear every now and then. Clay will have one or two or three games. But we need to go get some shooters. We need to get a little bit of size. I don't know why we can't get Robert Williams. It's, it's no reason why we can't get Malcolm, uh, the dude that looks like Brogdon. Obama. Yeah. We can't, Brogdon. There's no reason. I, it comes July. Uh, we all remember that great July when Durant and the Hampton uh, four or five or whatever. We can't come with small. We got to come big in July. That's all I'm saying. Y'all be blessed. Yeah, but, Evan, there's a lot of restraints. I hear, I feel his pain. The DiVincenzo, we kind of had fun with it. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say this just a second ago to, to bounce off his call. You're a part of the show. You hear me every day. And Four I'm hours. sitting up here a lot, 20 hours a week, lobbying for change. Yeah. And and if Kaminga's name was John uh, Calhoun, I would still want his future to be on somebody else's watch because I'd rather go get the the established veteran. All that I'm saying to you, and it's what I said to Stani and I meet it, Evan, if what you just said poetically about the Warriors is true, I feel like Draymond's suspension robbed us, the whole fan base and the Warriors, essentially, to really find out how far they are off. And where I'm going is I told Stani, hey, they might have lost to OKC, but I would feel better knowing how far we were really off as opposed to, well, some kids, they just put on the film of the playing game. Now, the playing game was fluky. 
And the reason I'm going to say today on this Thursday was fluky, Evan, is Draymond's not suspended. You're in the top six. You're going to get a seven-game series. So for all the people in the back that are saying run it back, maybe we would have a better idea of what we're running it back with. And that is the one caveat that if the Warriors re-sign Clay and they kind of just shock the world and don't do anything, Evan, your boy's not coming in here saying, oh, the Warriors don't have a chance. I could see them a top, top six seed because we've seen things, bits and pieces, and I would love to see. Yeah, they're going to be not favored if they tangle with Minnesota first, but I would love to see the finality of, in a series, where this team really is at and what they could achieve. Yeah, I think that's the most disappointing part about not making the playoffs is you don't get the literal gauge. You can try and jump through hoops to say, well, they lost to Sack, who man. lost to New Orleans, who got swept by OKC, but you never really know until you know. So that's the disappointing part to me about the playoffs is not seeing how far the Warriors are literally away from a particular wow. team, five games, six games, or they could have got swept. Who knows? But unfortunately, that's, that's where we are, and that's why I think – the, the transition that they're trying to figure out which direction to go in or whether to prolong or whether to kickstart immediately is, is a fascinating discussion because I'm looking also at the league, Goo, and I mentioned the fact that Indiana and New York don't have starters over 30. That's something that the Warriors will have no matter what because of number 30. But nice. the Warriors also have to figure out, okay, how patient can we be? Because one thing that I think is a discussion around this summer is you're in this position – because, not I won't say necessarily because of the title, but because they made decisions based on their previous success, based off their previous system. And we've heard Steve Kerr, and the caller was talking about it as well. we got to get bigger. we got to get more athletic. I think the, the choice they're going to have to make is whether they try and adopt a, a Minnesota-type style, which is a lot of size, a lot of interior length, disruption, or... Do we want to lean into more so, or do we have the capability to lean into more so of what, for example, OKC does, which is spread the floor, put five shooters out there, put four shooters out there in particular lineups? How do you acquire those pieces? I think whichever way they decide to go, they're going to have to make multiple moves. And that, to me, is the big change. I don't think a big change is coming in regards to a superstar or an established veteran, but I think change is coming in regards to the starting lineup being shaken up, this roster looking wholesale different taller that's what ideally you taller now, okay but then again they were a pretty good defensive group with trace at the five and draymond at the four so the warriors don't have a ton of flexibility i think right now or at least until they decide whether they're coming off of clay what to do with chris paul's contract but i think that the question i have for them is are you setting yourself up for this year or are you trying to set yourself up for what is left of Steph Curry? Because you've said right now, That's you said on the show, would, yeah. you, if he's got four more years, well then, maybe this year isn't extremely important. Because you don't want to dig yourself a deeper ditch and then end up in the same place you were, where you don't have a pick, you don't have uh, the ability to get below the second apron, and you got three or four Albatross contracts. I, I just don't want to see the Warriors continue to dig themselves a deeper hole. Wow, Evan. And all I can go back to is, and you were here, when the great Joe Lakeup and Raymond Ritter were out there and we got to chop it up with them before the show, and I think of Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. And yeah. the Warriors' plan was, let's bring in the adult in the room. Jordan Poole, you're gone. We're bringing in Chris Paul. And those men, and Joe Lakeup specifically, looked us in the eyes, and I could feel it oozing off of him, Evan. And I'm not saying he was wrong, but he was proven wrong. He thought he had a team that could compete at least make the playoffs. And you don't bring in Chris Paul to your team unless you think, you know, the benefit is going to be when it's go time. And to think about that thought process, to find out you didn't even make the playoffs, the reason I bring up the Mike Tyson line of the plan, the Warriors got hit in the mouth. So now when you talk about a, a front lineup, I think a Looney, Evan, he's got the size, but he doesn't have the dynamic athleticism. But he was good enough to help you get three of the four. I love TJD. You talk about Draymond, but his thing is not athleticism. It's helping you get the offense going. So, Evan, everything that you speak of, if they decide they want to do a Joan Rivers makeover or facelift, my gosh, where are you going to get those wings that I'm seeing, not just in the West? Minnesota's got like eight thousand of them yeah denver's got eight that 
Where do you go find those guys? They got to figure out a place. I don't know if it's if it's overseas. I don't know if it's plucking a player off the bottom of a roster that you think that you can reshape and remold. They're going to have to get creative. They're going to have to get creative more so than any other point wow, since the beginning, I would say, of, of how this thing started. Yeah, no and they doubt. put themselves in the position to be dynastic because they were creative. So they're going to have to get back to basics from that standpoint.